Ladies and gentlemen, many people have ascribed all sorts of motives to the writing of Cavalcade. Motives patriotic, political, and financial. Some people make a career of motive discovery. They search every word for a clue, like old ladies peering under the bed for burglars. The real story behind Cavalcade is very different. All my life I had wanted to do a big play on a big scale. I had considered all periods and episodes and one day I happened to pick up a back issue of the Illustrated London News. In it was a picture of a troop ship leaving for the Boer War. The whole scheme seemed to take form in my mind, then and there. I made some tentative arrangements, but then I had to go off to America to play private lives. All of a sudden, early in April, Charles B. Cochran wired me from London. I had to set an opening date for Cavalcade in order to get Drury Lane Theatre. So I took a chance for the end of September. There I was, no play, no cast, no costumes, all set. Just an opening date. But we finally succeeded in opening the show just two weeks after the original date. Then came the critics. One of the most amusing remarks was the reference of the press to my canny, shrewd political sense. A strong patriotic play just two weeks before the general election. The truth is that I'd been so busy I'd completely forgotten that there was to be an election at all. People have asked me, what parts of Cavalcade I like best. My own choice is Queen Victoria's funeral scene and the outbreak of the war in 1914. The first scene of Cavalcade, you remember, was on New Year's Eve. The last scene also takes place on New Year's Eve. At the close of that scene, a toast is proposed to England. As you hear it tonight, I should like you to feel that I am proposing a toast to each of you and to your country.
Master say they'd have champagne two bridges. It's a celebration, ain't it? And it wouldn't be a celebration without champagne, would it? There's hot punch. It's wiser to be on the safe side, is my way, Ellen. If hot punch fills the bill, they have hot punch. If it's champagne, it's here too. I was cook when you come up. Flighty. Running round the kitchen like a cat on a griddle. New Year's Eve's gone to her head and no mistake. She's been queer all day. Has she ever been quite right? Less than an hour ago, she told me she feels like it was the end of everything. Oh, so do I, for that matter. Oh, come, come now, Ellen. It ain't necessary to start that all over again. Well, you ain't losing a husband. Oh, you ain't losing me, Ellen. A man's marching off to war ain't staying home with his loved ones, is it? Well, no, not exactly. Oh, it's horrible, Bridges. I can't bear to think what it's going to be like when you're gone. Then don't think about it. Well, I can't help thinking. It's a bad <laughs> habit, Ellen. You ain't no different from the missus. Master Robert's going to, you know. You're in the same boat as all the other soldiers' wives. But you ain't cut out to be a soldier. Ellen. Well, what's going to happen to me and Fanny if anything happens to you? Oh, you'll <laughs> carry on. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, girl, you married me for better or worse, didn't you? Oh, I did, but... Well, if it turns out for worse, so much the worse it'll be. And if it turns out for better... Hmm, fat lot of comfort, that is. And what's the war for, anyhow? We've got to have wars every now and then to prove we're top dog. This one don't seem to be proving much. How can you tell what our brave boys are suffering out there in darkest Africa? Giving their life's blood for their queen and country. Oh, if this wasn't New Year's Eve, I'd lose my temper, and that's a fact. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. You'd better go and get the off punch. They'll be here in a minute. Oh, listen, there they are now. Draw the curtains. Why, it's almost New Year's. At least they want to be cheery. Yeah, hurry up now. Go on, get the off punch. You mark my words, Ellen. If we didn't give them boys a lesson, they'd be over near wreaking havoc and carnage before you could say Jack Robinson. I'll get along with you. Good evening, Bridget. Your cloak, ma'am. Thank you. Your coat, hat, and stick, sir. Here you are. Very good, sir. May I have the honor to wish you both a very, very happy New Year? Thank you, Bridget. Same to you. Ellen, how nice the table looks. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Where did those flowers come from? They're from me and Bridges, ma'am. With our very best wishes, I'm sure. That was sweet of you, Ellen. Oh, not at all, ma'am. Well, it's a pleasure indeed. Well, I'll go and help Bridges with the off punch, ma'am. It was sweet of them, Robert. I feel I want to cry. Well, then by all means cry, dearest. This evening was planned sentimentally. To say hail and farewell. It isn't farewell yet. Soon, Robert. Dreadfully soon. When it comes, then we'll take it. You look so beautiful at dinner, Jane. I'm glad. You're beautiful now. Oh, I expect it's only that dress, really. Dresses can be very deceiving, darling. Of course. That's perhaps how we wear them. And that ornament in your hair? Yes. And the fact that I love you so dearly. You might be hideous and ill-dispositioned and tedious, and I would never know it. You're a darling. And I'm going to believe every word you say, even though I know I shouldn't. Kiss me, Robert. Sweetheart. 
a goodbye to the old year. I wonder if the boys are asleep. Snoring, I expect. Oh, no, Robert, not snoring. They both have perfect tonsils. Dr. Harrison said so. Inherited from their mother, my dear. Oh, Robert, why must you leave me? It takes men to fight wars. What does it matter about the boars? It matters about your brother Jim, doesn't it? He's out there. That counts. Yes. Give my love to him if you ever see him. If he's alive. Of course he's alive. They're all alive. They're bound to be relieved soon. Baden Powell's a fine man. How long will it last? The war, I mean. A few months. God willing. In a few hours you'll be sailing. You'll be going on board. Perhaps it'll be all over when you get there. Perhaps. I suppose you'd hate that, Robert. Bitterly. Edward and Joel want to see you off. No. No, they'd better be here. They're your sons. No, they're, they're children. They'd better be here. It's rather horrid even thinking about it, isn't it? Thank heaven for one thing. They won't have to fight. Peace and happiness for them. Oh, please, God. Peace and happiness for them. Always. <laughs> A new year. It started, sir, just 12 o'clock. Happy New Year to you both, Mum. Bridges, open the windows. Come over here, Ellen. Stay and drink with us. What, me, sir? Fill four glasses, Bridges. Champagne. Make it champagne. We'll be toasting the new year and all it means to us. The new year. Here we are. Now, raise your glasses. Jane, Ellen, Bridges, 1900. 1900. 1900. Listen. What is it? The children. I thought I heard. I'd better go up and see. It sounded like Master Joe. Bring them down here, Jane. Bring them both down. How very impolite of the 20th century to waken the children. I think I'd better be getting aboard. Yes. We're, we're almost ready to sail, I imagine. Yes. It's come at last, hasn't it, Robert? This moment. You'll be very brave, darling, won't you? I'll try to be. Take care of yourself, my dearest. I shall probably be seasick. Lie down flat on every possible occasion. I'll try to remember. Bridges will look after you. Perhaps you'll be lying down flat, too. And... And you mustn't worry about me being unhappy when you've gone. I'm going to keep myself very busy. I shan't give myself time to think of anything. Except that I'm so proud. So proud of you, darling. I'll write and telegraph whenever it's possible. Please do. Well? This... This is horrid, isn't it? I really must go. Not just for a minute. Jane. Yes, Robert? I'm going to kiss you once more. And then I want you to turn away. Turn away and go right on talking. So you won't actually see me leave you. Very well, my darling. Now, Jane. Edward and Joe were terribly anxious to come, but I'm glad I didn't bring them, really. Joe gets overexcited so easily. He's had a very bad cold, anyhow. Edward could have come, I suppose, but, but that would have upset Joe so dreadfully. Being left alone. <laughs> Take care of yourself, my own dear. You're not here anymore, so... So I can break down a little. I felt you go. When I said about Joe being overexcited. Robert. Robert. <laughs> Edward, how many boars did I kill that time? Twenty-seven. Set them up again, Cousin Edith. This one's got his leg knocked off. <clears throat> then he's wounded. You've got to put him back in the box. 
I wonder how many boars father has killed, Edward. Oh, hundreds, I expect. I wish these were real boars instead of tin ones. Bang, bang, bang. Dirty old Kruger, bang. Shut up, Joe. How dare you fire without orders? Excuse me, sir. There, that is very much more like it. Put your army up again, will you, Cousin Edith? Edward. Well, what is it? Need I always be the boars? Yes. Why? Because you're only a girl. Watch out. Bang, bang, bang. I'll teach you, you mean little pig. I have a cannon of my own, even though I am a boar. Bang, bang, bang. How do you like that? Bang. Take the old cannon. Don't throw it at Joe. I'll smash all of his soldiers. It's not fair. Stop walking or lose the nice soldiers. Edith, that was cheating. I'm sick of being the boars. I'll never be the boars again so long as I live. I won't be the boars. Edith. I won't be. Children, why on earth are you making such an awful noise? Aunt Margaret and I can hear you right down the hall. It's Edith's mother. What's the matter with Edith? She doesn't like being the boars, Aunt Margaret. She's mutinied. I don't mm. blame her. Bang, bang, bang. Here's your cannon thrown back. Oh, Joe! Ouch! <laughs> Joe, you're a naughty, wicked little boy. You go upstairs this minute. I only meant... Upstairs. <laughs> but, Mother, men fight. I don't see why I can't. Come over here, Edith, and stop crying. He hit my knee with his cannon. <laughs> well, she got angry because we killed her soldier. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it! Can't you play any other game but soldiers? Soldiers? Soldiers hurting each other, killing each other? Go away from me, go away! Jane, don't! Run along now, all of you. I'm sorry, Mum. It's all right. Run upstairs, dear. Yes, Mum. Come on, Cousin Edith. Come on, Joe. I'm sorry, Cousin Edith. I didn't mean to hurt you. Jane, I'm all right. It, it's just nerves. Listen, soldiers of the Queen. There's no escape from it anywhere, is there? Shall I throw them some money and ask them to go away? I don't care. If it isn't them, it'll be somebody else. Oh, Margaret, will these days ever end? Robert said it'd be only a little while and then it'd be all over. That was nearly four months ago. News will come soon. You must have courage, Jane. I don't believe I shall ever see Robert again. Be brave, dear. It's much easier to be brave when there's something to hear, something definite. I can't go on smiling through long, dragging weeks. I can't do it, Margaret. You're not in it alone, Jane. But two people I love best in all the world, down there suffering. I don't hear a word. It's dreadful. Mathigan is bound to be relieved within the next few days. And then it's all over. All the papers say so. That's what they've said for months. But they're dying down there. Please, dear. Dying. I can't bear to think of it, and yet I can't stop thinking. I can see it at night. Come in. Pardon me, Mama. I just thought that some nice off tea... Splendid, Ellen. Tea does help, Mum. Has, has any news come? Not yet, Ellen. No news. None. We've been standing outside the war office for hours. Then we went to Fleet Street to the newspaper offices. Well, here's a nice cup of tea, and that'll make you feel better. Thank you, Ellen. Well, there ain't no cause to worry about the master, ma'am. He's all right. He's got my bridges with him. And if anything happened to either of them, we'd be bound to hear from one of them, if you know what I mean. You must be fearfully worried, too, Ellen. Oh, well, on and off I am, but I says to myself that... No news is good news, and what must be, must be. You'd never believe how that cheers me up, Mum. Paper! Paper! Helen, find out what the news is. Yes, Paper! 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 It's about Mavie King. Oh, Margaret! News the Wait a minute! Boy, wait, wait! There's Ellen. She's down there. She's speaking to him. Ellen, what news? Are the lips of the wounded? Ellen, what is it? Nothing but what we've been hearing, Mum. Nothing. Always the same. Jane. Yes? You're going to rest. Rest? How can I? Then we're both going out. Out? I'm going now. I shall be back at a quarter to seven. Why? We're going to dine at the Café Royal, Jane. And then go to the theatre. I couldn't. You could and you will, Jane. It's senseless sitting at home by yourself, fretting and worrying. It doesn't do any good. Robert wouldn't want you to. What you need is life and music. I can go. You are going. It's a gesture, Jane. You've got to make it. Be ready at a quarter to seven. I'll be here. Margaret, wait! A gesture for men who are dying. Keep on. Go on playing. Play louder. Soldiers of the Queen, wounded and dying and suffering for the Queen. Play louder, play louder, play louder! <laughs> We 
right off. I say, come here, please. Our glasses are empty. Directly, sir. Yes, sir. Jane, darling, brace up. Yes. This is a party, isn't it? Of course. Let your mood fit your gown. You are beautiful, Jane. Robert said the same thing New Year's Eve. He said he'd be back soon. I... I slept after you left me this afternoon. Splendid. I dreamed. Only it wasn't as if it were a dream. It was so real that I... Margaret. Yes, Jane? I saw Robert. I was with him, Margaret. I don't know where it was. I couldn't tell somehow. It was a place I'd never been before. Lovely. Peaceful. And Robert was there. Come now, drink your wine. Robert spoke to me, tossed his hat aside and came running to me as if he were a boy, like Joe or Edward. He laughed, called as he came running. He called me by name. Jane. Oh, Robert, you're safe. Why, of course I am. Jim, how is he? As right as man can be. Let me look at you, darling. Oh, sweetheart. You look so tired. You haven't been worrying about me, have you? No, not too much. <laughs> oh, you were never a good liar. <laughs> I'm glad of that, though. Not to miss me. Not to care. Too much. Oh, I've missed you so, dear. But you're here, and you're... Robert! What's wrong, dear? Your left arm. It, it's all right, Jane. It's gone! I... I do nicely without it. It was just fooling about with some youngsters. We were making believe war. Oh. One of them became furious when I called her a boar and threw a cannon at me. Not so sporting, I thought. But it wasn't an arm, Robert. It was the knee. Was it? Oh, very well. What's the difference? We'll stop playing before long. We will settle down at home. Drink a toast to the queen. Robert... I saw Jim, sent his love, be back home before long. Robert, wait for me. Robert. I know what that dream means. Shadows. Jane, dear, don't be absurd. My arm coming back, Margaret. Wars will go on forever. Boys will grow and become men. And because it's man's task to prove we're the master. Jane, what do you say? Bridget was right. He told Ellen the truth. We must prove we're top dog. Men must be born and live, die. What was that? Quiet. Quiet, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we have news from the front. Matthew King has been relieved. Jane, you hear? It's over, Jane. The world is over. Oh, please. God, let it be true. Helen, cook, come here, quick, quick. And what's the matter, Mr. Bridges? Look here, the newspaper. Oh, don't yell so, Bridges. It can't be anything to concern us. Helen, how can you say that? It concerns the old country. Look here, the Queen... It says she's sinking. What? The Queen? There, now, I told you so. Oh, well, let's have a look. Oh, and she's very old, isn't she? Old? What's that got to do with it? Well, and I've never seen her, have I? I have. Driving along Birdcage Walk once, years ago. England won't be the same place without the Queen. Mother. Quiet, Edward. Stand back a little from the window. Edward, is an Ellen, see, too. Can you see, Ellen? Oh, thank you, Mum. I can see. Oh, the Queen. Oh, God bless her. Easy, girl. Easy now. Look, Mum. There's Father. There's Father down there in the procession. Shh. Be quiet, darling. They're passing now. Stand absolutely still. To attention. Like your father showed you. Yes, ma'am. Five kings riding behind her. Mum, she must have been a very little lady.
But Robert, Robert, are you sure they're safe? Safe? What, Nanny? Those, what did you call them? Those automobiles. Oh, I imagine they're safe enough. But don't worry. I won't buy one yet for a while. Here, you better hurry and get dressed. We haven't much time. I'm almost done. How's my gown? Lovely, darling. And the train? If any lady at the court has one more perfect, I shall throw up my hands. <laughs> I shall probably throw them up anyway. I'm not very fond of these formal affairs, my dear. They make me nervous. Oh, Robert, don't be silly. I mean it. The going was far less difficult for those fellows in Africa, really. Don't talk about that. Please. No, no. What's the matter? I'm happy tonight, Robert. I want to stay happy. War isn't happiness. Oh, right. Our son, Joe and Edward. If war ever came again and took them... It's not I... going to take them. Have a look at my tie, will you, darling? Of course. I'm sorry, Robert. That's all right. Well, am I dressed up to please you? You're perfect. Except, where's your Victoria Cross? Oh. Oh, here we are. Wait, I'll put it on for you. Some men are brave enough to win the VC, but I've yet to meet one who knows how to wear it. There. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Robert. I mean, Sir Robert. We've come a long way, Lady Jane. A very long way. And in such a few years. It frightens me sometimes. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. I mean, everything's so different, Robert. You're happy, aren't you? Of course, darling. And yet, oh, haven't you ever ached right down inside for, well, for the other days? Before the war? If you want. Yes, I think I have. Things are different. Things have changed. But it isn't only us. It's the whole world. It's all England. There's a new spirit to things, a new thought, a new philosophy of existence. I don't know exactly what it is. I don't even know that I care for it, but it's there. Well... I sometimes wonder if we weren't just as happy then in a small house with just Ellen and Bridges. Oh, good old Bridges. I miss them, Robert. I miss Ellen. We must run down and see them sometime. They opened a pub, you know, after they left us. A pub? You mean a bar room? Oh, of course. Didn't I tell you? Bridges wrote me all about it. A pub. They've changed, too. No, Bridges. He couldn't. He'll be the same Bridges till the day he dies. I hope so. I don't know. is beautifully, Ellen. Oh, thank you, Mum. Bridges and me has been giving her lessons now for two years. Very talented, if you ask me. Oh, thank you, Sir Robert. Come here, Fanny. Yes, sir. I don't suppose you remember me. You were just a baby when I knew you. Yes, sir. Mum has told me how we used to live at your house. Me you now. That's enough. Now go and sit down, Fanny. Yes, Mother. I hear Master Robert is at Oxford College, my lady. Yes, mad about it, too. You must come and see us sometime when he's down on vacation, Ellen. Oh, thank you, Mum. Hello, Ellen. Oh, hello, George. I've got the missus with me. Oh, I didn't know you had company. Oh, please stay. Don't go on our account. Oh, come in, Flo. We just dropped by, Ellen. We didn't know you had. Uh, this is Mr. and Mrs. George Snapper, my lady. Sir Robert and Lady Marriott. Oh. Oh, oh. Yes, oh sit down, Flo. Sit down, sit down, sit down, George. Well, uh, uh, thanks. Uh, a nice day out, Sir Robert. Yes, yes, it's really spring now. Uh, uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> By the way, Ellen, I'm, I'm sorry to hear Bridges is ill. Bridges ill? What's wrong with him, Ellen? Well, before you and Flo come, George, I was explaining to her ladyship and Sir Robert about poor Bridges' bad leg. We were so sorry to hear about it. Bad leg? Ellen explained that he's been in horrible agony ever since Sunday. Where is he? he Stop kicking down my shins. Uh, where is he, Ellen? Upstairs in bed. I'll pop up and see him. He's asleep now. Well, my eye. By the way, Ellen... You didn't tell us how he came to have the accident. Oh, well, he, he was cycling, Sir Robert. He, he was cycling and he fell off. I didn't know he had a cycle. He hasn't any more. Would you tell him how sorry we were not to, to, not to have seen him? Yes, Sir Robert, I'll do that. Goodbye, Ellen. Oh, it was so kind of you, Mum, to come all the way down here to see us and to bring Fanny that lovely doll and everything. I wanted to see you. Goodbye, Mrs. Snapper. Happy to have met you, I'm sure. Goodbye, Mr. Snapper. Uh, goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Ellen. Goodbye, Ellen, again. 
Don't fail to remember me to Bridges. We miss you both. It seems as if it were only yesterday that you were with us. We miss you too, Mum. Time changes many things, but it can't change old friends, can it? Oh, no, Mum. No. There's some things that... Yeah. Yeah, what's going on here? Oh, my Lord. My eye. Bridges. I thought you was in bed. Bed? Who said anything about bed? Oh, you better go back, Bridges. Oh, remember your leg, dear. Ain't nothing wrong with my leg. Oh, Bridges. Oh, so you're why she was trying to get me out of the way. Hello, Bridges. Pleased to meet you again, Sir Robert. Welcome to our arbor. Ha, <laughs> ha. I, I, I think we better go, Jane. Oh, sir, so that's how it stands. I see. Proud and haughty, are we? Oh, Bridget, stop it. No, please, stop it. Oh. Ellen, I'm so sorry. And I quite understand. Please don't be upset. And let me come and see you again. Come along, dear. Come along, dear. Come along. Who does he think he is? Oh, you drunken brute. Shut your mouth. You mind yours and I'll mind mine. Look here, old man. You better come up and have a lie down. Take your paw off my arm. Lot of snobs, that's what. Lot of bloody snobs. I'm not good enough to be home when the quality comes. I'll see who's good enough. Who oh, give Fanny that doll? Her noble ladyship. Oh, you let it alone. I'll look after the truck quality brings to my home. I'll look after him, I will. I'll hand it right back to him. George! I'll go and fetch him. Don't worry. He's a bit woozy, that's oh, all. He's gone down the street. He may go up to their home. I'll stop him. George, let him go. Uh, Bridges, come back here, you blighter. Mind man. your own business. Come back out of the street. There's a bus making towards you. I'm not good enough for him. God's name, look out. I'll show him who he is. <laughs> Don't come out. He's been it. Oh, he's run over. He's dead. He's dead. I say, Father. Yes, Edward? Father, are you going to sit up all night? I hope not. Are you? No, sir. I... Well, I'm, I'm You're just... just sitting up waiting for Joe, aren't you, Edward? Yes, sir. So am I. Where is he? I don't know, sir. Sure? He said he was going out tonight, so that's all I know. And he said he'd be back early. Mm, three o'clock, that's early enough. I suppose you're going to play the Good Samaritan again? Help him up to bed? Well, Father, I... You've done it before quite a few times. Or did you think I didn't know? Well, Father, don't be rough with him. Joe's just a kid. He doesn't know what it's all about. He's all right. Of course he is. That's why I want to speak to him. By the way, how's Edith? Oh, very well. Huh. Set the date yet? Yes, sir. It's the 7th. Good. She's a splendid girl, Edith. You sailing to America on your honeymoon, eh? If Edith wants to. Now, about Joe, Father. Oh, well, that must be Joe now. I imagine so. You won't stay, will you? Well, no, sir. That is not unless you... Thanks, Edward. I say, Edward, is everything clear? Yes, quite clear, Joe. Come in. Oh. Oh, I say, Father... I didn't know that you were downstairs. It's all right. How are you, Joe? I? Oh, I'm quite well, thanks. But I, I think I'll say good night. Yes, good night, old man. Sit down, Joe. Have a good time? Tonight? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Splendid. I, I was out with some of the lads. We did the town a bit. You know how it is. Of course, of course. I used to go out with the lads myself. Oh, we had some gay old times. Used to stay out till all hours. Really? Yes. Once in a while. Oh. You fellows go a good deal faster than we did, of course. Things were speeded up so. Only the other night, your mother and I went to a restaurant after the theater. First time I'd been for years. There were a lot of young people there. I was quite surprised. Surprised? Mm, the way they were carrying on. Oh, I wasn't shocked or anything like that, but... It, it was so different. So utterly different from anything I'd ever known. It was... unhealthy somehow. There was a young fellow off in the corner with a party. A fellow about, uh, About your age, Joe. He had a girl with him. Very pretty girl, too. But they'd both been drinking quite a lot. 
wasn't a very pleasant sight. Luckily, your mother had her back to them. But I didn't want to take any chances. I took her out of the place. On the way home, I got to thinking. I thought, I'm glad that boy wasn't Joe. If it had been Joe, it would have hurt horribly. What, what restaurant was it, sir? Cafe Royal. I see. Ever been there, Joe? Yes, sir. You say that you took Mother out? That's right. She, she didn't see? No. Well, good night, Joe. Good night, sir. See you in the morning. Yes, sir. And Father? Well? Thank you for taking Mother out. Edward? Darling, stand here close to the rail. Oh, it's glorious. But it's too big, the Atlantic, isn't it? Far too big. And too deep. Much, much too deep. I don't care a bit, do you? <laughs> Not a scrap. Wouldn't it be awful if a magician came to us and said, unless you count accurately every single fish in the Atlantic, you died? Died. How much would you mind dying, I mean? I don't know, really. A good deal, I expect. I don't believe I should mind so very much now. You see, we could never in our whole lives be happier than we are now, could we? Well, darling, there are different sorts of happiness. This is the best sort. Oh, sweetheart. Don't, darling. We don't want any more of the stewards to know we're on our honeymoon. Why not? Most of them have forgotten what a honeymoon's like. Did you ever think when we were children, going to the pantomime and going to the zoo and playing soldiers, that we should ever be married? Of course I didn't. Was I a nice child? Horrible. So were you. So was Joe. Vile. You always used to take sides against me. And yet we all liked one another, really. I think I liked Joe better than you. But then he was younger and easier to manage. <laughs> he was awfully funny at the wedding, wasn't he? Yes, he has no reverence, I'm afraid. Absolutely none. He's passing gallantly through the chorus girl phase now, isn't he? Yeah, gallantly, but not quickly. You had... Uh... Several love affairs before you married me, didn't you? <clears throat> Light of my life, please shut up. You'd be awfully cross if I'd had, wouldn't you? Did you? Hundreds. <laughs> Liar. Oh. I rather wish I had, really. Perhaps I should have learned some tricks to hold you with when you begin to get tired of me. Oh, I never shall, darling. Oh, yes, you will. One day. The loveliness we feel now will fade. And the guilt wear off the gingerbread. Tell me, have you ever seen gingerbread with guilt on it? Never. <laughs> then that's settled. Mm -hmm. Anyway, look at father and mother. They're perfectly happy. They had a better chance at the beginning. Things weren't changing so swiftly. Life wasn't so restless. How long do you give us? I don't know. I don't care. This is our moment, Edward. Complete and heavenly. This is our own forever. Wireless message for you, sir. Oh, thank you, Stuart. I'll take it here. A wireless message for us? Nobody else, darling. Look here. Mr. and Mrs. Edward Marriott. On board the steamship Titanic. Robert, help me off with these dust sheets. We'll get a woman in tomorrow and clean up. All right, dear. I shall never go on a holiday again. Ever. It's horrid when you're there, and it's much worse when you come back. Still, it is better to be here in London, Jane, if anything is going to happen. It's going to happen, all right. I'm afraid there's no doubt about it now. 
Oh, it, it's so hot I can't breathe, Robert. Hello, Mother. Oh, Joe, darling. It's grand to see you back. How are you, Father? Fine, thanks. Cigarettes? Oh, uh, no, son, no. They're pretty exciting, all the things that are happening, aren't they? Yes. Rather like Germans, don't you? Enormously. There is a war. How long do you think it will last? Three months of the outside. I suppose we shall win, shan't we? Robert. What's wrong, dear? I'm going upstairs for a minute. I shan't be long. All right, darling. I say, the war might last for six months, don't you think? Oh, impossible. Have you any idea, Joe, what a war costs in actual money? I suppose quite a lot. Yes. And the Germans can afford it even less than we can. Are you glad you left the army or sorry? Absolutely delighted. Will you go back again? <laughs> I expect so. I'll go, too. You want to? Terribly. Why? I don't know. I just want to. I wish Edward was still here. We could have started off together. Now, don't be too impulsive, Joe. Think of your mother. Think of me. You're all we have left now. Piper! War declared in Nice Germany! Listen! Piper! Father, do you hear? Piper! Robert! Robert, what is it? England is at war, my dear. War. War. Oh, isn't it? Don't look so sad, Mum. It won't last long. I say, Father, we ought to have some wine. We must drink to this. <laughs> We've only hot. We'll have to drink to the downfall of Germany in her own wine. Here, here. Edward missed this. I'm glad. Jane. He died when he was happy, before the world broke over his head. Don't say that, Jane. We've had wars before without the world breaking. Drink to war, then, if you want. I'm not going to. I can't. Rule Britannia. Send us victorious, happy and glorious. Drink, Joey. You're on your baby, Silver. You're old enough for war. Drink like the Germans are drinking. To victory and defeat. And stupid, tragic sorrow. But leave me out of it. <laughs> glad to see you. I couldn't believe my eyes when you first walked in. Sit down. I just thought I'd call, madam. I'm glad you did. So glad. These are lonely days, aren't they, Ellen? My call's rather important, as a matter of fact. How's Fanny? Oh, very well. I'm never going to forget how she danced the last time we saw her. She's dancing in over the moon now, you know. Yes, I went the other night. She was splendid. I felt very proud to know her. It's about her I've come to see you. Is anything wrong? Well, no. <coughs> Not exactly. What is it? About her and uh, Joe. Joe? Yes. I don't understand, Ellen. Well, they've been... Uh, <coughs> they've been uh, what you might call in love. <coughs> yes. My Joe? Yes. Your Joe. His last two leaves. He spent a lot of time with Fanny. Oh, I see. I wouldn't have come to see about it at all, only, uh, well, now that the war's over, or almost over, that is, and he'd be coming home, I thought that... What did you think? Well, I thought they ought to get married. Does Fanny want to marry him? Oh, I haven't talked to her about it. She doesn't know, I know. And how do you know? I found a letter he wrote. And you read it? Of course. I brought it with me. I knew you'd want to see it. I do not wish to read it. Oh, oh I see. I think we'd better let the whole thing stand until Joe comes home. Then he and Fanny can decide what they wish to do. 
Oh, I didn't wish to, wish to upset you. I'm not in the least upset. It's been on my mind. But you didn't tell Fanny before you came here. I think I know why. In any case, I never interfere with my son's affairs. Well, sure, I'm very sorry. That's all. Goodbye, Ellen. I suppose you imagine that my daughter isn't good enough to marry your son. Well, if that's the case, I can assure you that you're very much mistaken. Fanny's received everywhere. She knows all the best people. How nice for her. I wish I did. Oh, things aren't what they used to be, you know. Oh, no. It's all changing. Yes, I see it is. Fanny's at the top of the tree now. Well, she's up in the most wonderful office. Oh, Ellen. What is it? I'm so sorry, so sorry. <laughs> Don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do, inside. You must understand, Ellen. Something seems to have gone out of all of us. Goodbye, Ellen. Your pardon, my lady. Yes? What is it, Belden? A telegram. Thank you. It's all over, my lady. The war's over. It's 11 o'clock. My lady. There's... There's no answer, Belden. No answer. My lady, is anything wrong? Oh, ma'am. Oh, quick, what's happened? W w what's in that telegram? You needn't worry about Fanny and Joe, Ellen. He won't be able to come back anymore. Because he's dead. Dead? Oh, God. Oh, dear God. <laughs> sleep? No, dear. I was just sitting here, thinking, and watching the crowds go by in the street. Did Franklin bring the champagne up? There it is, by the table. Good. Well, Robert, here we go again. I believe you will laugh at me inside for my annual sentimental outburst. No, dear. I don't laugh at you. One more year behind us. One more year before us. Do you mind? Oh, no. Everything passes. Even time. It seems incredible, doesn't it? Here we are in this same room. Yes. I've hated it for years. Do you want to move? Of course not. We might have some new curtains. We have, dear. And I never noticed. They've only been up a week. They look very nice. Robert, what toast have you in mind for the night? Something gay and original, I hope. Just our old friend, the future. The future of England. Quick, it's starting. The champagne. Hurry. I can't get the thing open. Let me try. There it is. Here, Jane. First of all, my dear, I drink to you. Loyal and loving always. God bless you, Jane. Now, let us couple the future of England with the past of England, the glories and victories and triumphs that are over, and the sorrows that are over, too. Let's drink to our sons who made part of the pattern, and to our hearts that died with them. Let's drink to the spirit of gallantry that made a strange heaven out of unbelievable hell. And let's drink to the hope that one day, this country of ours, which we love so much, will find dignity and greatness and peace again. Thank you.
Thank you.